Greetings! I am Herbert Erbaderb, and today is the day of the asking of the Herbert Erbaderb, which is me, Herbert Erbaderb. Before we get to the asking though, let's welcome our newest patron, Bobby Shafto, if I'm saying that right. Thank you very much and welcome. I hope you enjoy being a patron. You'll be getting a card in the mail sometime relatively soon. I appreciate your support, it really does help. If you would like to be awesome like Bobby, there's a link to Patreon in the description. Also, current patrons, if you would like to receive a thing in the mail, please make sure your address is up to date. If there's no address, I will just assume that you prefer not to receive a thing, and that's okay. It's nothing huge, but I was kind of hoping to keep it a random surprise. Not many people have their addresses on Patreon though, which is understandable of course. So I figured I would just say if you want to receive a thing in the mail, put your address in Patreon. If not, I totally understand. I guess I should probably make a post about it on Patreon itself. Anyway, thank you very much to Bobby Shafto. I appreciate it. Now, let's get to the question times. First, a patron voice question from Major General Bunk. Have you ever heard the tragedy of the ugly barnacle? I, uh, no, I haven't. It's a starfish legend. Sponges wouldn't tell you. Once there was an ugly barnacle. It was so ugly that everyone died. Ironic. He could save others from ugliness, but not from himself. Well, now I have. I don't know what to make of it, but I did answer the question posed, I guess. Remember, if you're a patron, you have the option of submitting a question in your own voice. Now let's answer some text-based questions from Discord. Graf Pudding said, What's your opinion on dumpster diving and food waste? I've never gone dumpster diving myself, but I can see why people do it. I would be cautious, especially with stuff that might have been sitting in a hot bin all day. That might not be relevant for other parts of the world, but something that might have been perfectly fine when put in the bin might no longer be any good after being in there for a while, especially around here where it's extremely hot all day. I don't especially like food waste, especially when it's a case of food being thrown out just because it's not profitable anymore, but whoever's throwing it away doesn't want somebody else to have it. I used to work at a supermarket, and I remember we used to throw out tons of bananas, I would say they were the most wasted fruit. They would get tossed as soon as they had any brown spots at all. Bananas with brown spots of course are still good, but apparently people wouldn't buy them if they had spots, so they would take them off the shelf and they'd go straight into the bin. Not made into other things, not given or even sold to some kind of shelter or whatever, just binned and then locked in the bin. I don't know if that's still their policy, I hope not, but it really annoyed me. I'm sure there are often good reasons to throw away food, but a lot of it is pointless wastage. I guess that's a long way to say that I don't like wastage, especially when it's out of greed, and I feel like if you can get something good out of the bin safely, then go for it. Stuglife said, Thoughts on Airfix? My thoughts on Airfix are fairly well known if you've been around for a while. I mostly feel indifferent. Most of the Airfix kits I've built have been at least a bit disappointing, but the Cromwell I built was rather good. The problem with Airfix is that I could buy one of their kits in a relatively new looking box, but still get something from the 60s, and I don't like that. Every time this comes up somebody says, Do your research Herbert! But I'm not interested in standing there researching stuff on my phone in the hobby shop. Pretty much every non-wargaming kit that I buy is an impulse buy in a physical store. Also, I have heard on multiple occasions that Airfix have started putting their old moulds in classical boxes or something like that, but I've never seen those on the shelf. What I don't like is people who get angry about Airfix because they have no nuance, so it's either they hate Airfix or they love it, and people who expect me to also be that way. Personally, I just don't plan on buying any Airfix kits in the future. If you get one and you enjoy building it, that's good, I'm happy for you. Head of Secret Science Boys said, Is mayonnaise an instrument? Sure, if you want to use it as an instrument, then go right ahead. Music is subjective, so why not? Weird Al uses burping as a rhythmic element, so why not mayonnaise? A duck drinking cough syrup said, 
What is your opinion on using cheap household items such as toothpicks to replace parts or using them as tools? Example using a paper clip to make a hole in plastic. I think it's good to be resourceful. If you don't have the absolute right tool or part for something, why not improvise? It might be quicker and easier than ordering the part online or going to buy an appropriate tool or part. I'm pretty sure improvising and adapting has been a part of the hobby since it started. The kind of person who is so rigid and uncreative that they can't or won't use anything but the exact correct tool or part probably doesn't have a creative hobby like modelling in the first place. And if they do, they're probably insufferable about it. Smose said, Is it bad that I hate Christmas? I don't think so. I'm not a huge fan of it myself. I guess to be fair, what I don't like about it is the commercial part, which I suppose really is the main part now. It's all buy, 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 consume. Prove to your loved ones that you care by giving a huge corporations money. I don't like that a whole lot. I also dislike the religious aspect to it, what well, little of it there is left, because I just dislike religion. Also, here it's the hottest part of the year, which sucks. But I do like the excuse to have good food with family and friends and such. Trekan Belovich said, Would you buy something that Quark offers? Hmm, maybe a drink in his bar? Otherwise I doubt it. Quark might be a lovable character, but he's also a con man and you would undoubtedly be ripped off. Smoes said, Is airbrush cleaner entirely necessary, or can the parts be thoroughly cleaned out with water or rubbing alcohol? I'm no expert, but I would say that airbrush cleaner isn't totally necessary. I've never owned any, and my airbrushes have been working for a long time. I mostly clean with water and alcohol, and I've never really had any problems. The only reason I've had to replace an airbrush recently was one of the parts was physically damaged, and not due to its cleanliness or anything like that. Desert Valentine said, Been seeing a lot of 148th stuff lately, which is cool as it's a nice scale. Did you grab yourself a job lot, or just been building them up over time? Since I had to Google what a job lot is, just to be sure, I discovered that I haven't bought them that way. They're a good price and consistently good quality though, so they're a prime target for my impulse buying. I have had a few of them sitting in my stash for quite a while, and I think they make a pretty good subject for build streams. I mean, they're not usually done in one stream, but it doesn't take too many streams to complete the kit. The Pershing I recently uploaded the build video of, which you should check out, was the last of the 148th scale Tamiya kits I had in my stash so I'm definitely going to have to go and get more. Martin Gotham said, Are Meng models good? I don't really know. I'm pretty sure I've never built anything from Meng. I am pretty forgetful though, so maybe I have. I have heard that they're quite good, and maybe one day I'll pick one up to find out for myself. They do seem kind of expensive though. Digital Rocket said, What is the most unnecessary model related product you've ever seen being sold or advertised? Hmm, good question. I did try to think of something ridiculous because I'm sure there are ridiculous things out there, but nothing really comes to mind. It's not really ridiculous, but I suppose some of the holders that you see for figures and stuff are kind of unnecessary. Some of them do look very cool, but totally unnecessary. I guess things like specific mold line removing tools also. Again, not super ridiculous, and they can be nice, but you can always just use a knife. Most of what I'm coming up with are things where you can get the exact same product cheaper without a modelling related brand. Things like super glues and sanding sticks. Those aren't really unnecessary products though, just unnecessary branding and the associated pricing. Not a very good answer I guess. The Master Cutler said, Have you any plans to paint those A7Vs you built a long while back? Or have they already been painted and I've missed something? I've not painted them yet. I do think to myself every now and then that I should paint them up to upload around Remembrance Day or Anzac Day or something relevant, but I just keep forgetting. And there are other things that I am a bit more excited to paint. Muse said, Do you think the hobby of modelling is dying or growing? I have no hard data to back it up, but I think it's growing. It's not extreme growth. But there are a whole bunch of companies in modelling, and they're profitable enough, I assume, to keep making new things. And it's easier than ever to find loads of modelling related content on the internet. 
Maybe modelling magazines and physical media struggle a bit, but that's mostly because a lot of people aren't into that kind of thing anymore. Personally, I don't like the waste of paper and paying for it. Magazines are real expensive now, and that's not just a modelling thing either, it's a general thing. Digital is way easier. So I guess it really depends on your perspective. It is definitely a niche hobby, and not everybody's going to be into it or even care about it, and that's fair. If everybody was into the same thing, the world would be quite boring. I guess if you ask some of the shitty old guys I've encountered in the hobby, even the handful I overheard at the Model Hobbies Expo I was at a while ago, the hobby is definitely dying, and it's everybody else's fault. Especially the kids because they have technology and useless distractions and such. They surely can't be put off by old people with no self-awareness being dismissive and gatekeepery. Nope. If you're unpleasant and nobody wants to share the hobby with you, then I guess you might think it's dying. I know that there's quite a few young people into modelling, so from my perspective I think it's growing. Maybe not super quick, but it's not dying. Smose said, Did you ever play the Deep Space Nine PC game? I don't think I did. I do remember having the virtual tour thing that came with the DS9 DVDs, but I don't think that included a game. That said, I might have played it and forgotten about it. I kind of doubt it though. Commissar Tuppy said, If you could promote a KV-2 turret, would you? I would, but the KV-2 turret already holds the highest possible rank. Stuglife said, What do you think of this Discord? I like it. I'm not a huge social media user. I would count Discord as social media, I don't know if you do. Anyway, it's generally pretty decent. I am occasionally disappointed when somebody decides to be a shithead, but they don't really last very long anyway. I'm in a few other discords that I consider pretty good too. I try to observe what they do and what makes them good to be in, and apply that to my own server. I've also been in some pretty garbage servers, but I'm not going to name any names, cause why bother? I think a large difference between the good servers and the shitty ones is moderation. The less enjoyable servers are the kind with little to no moderation, and seem to be populated with edgelord teenagers and whiny babies who seem to believe they should be able to say anything they like with no consequences. You know the kind. The kind that whine about freedom of speech. They're usually the same servers that are fine with racism and homophobia, and things like that. Either too worried about numbers to ban people, or just don't care. Either way, it makes for an environment that I don't care for. I think on my Discord we do a pretty decent job of making a welcoming environment. The rules are simple and easy enough to follow, and we're pretty lenient. It's not for everybody, but everyone is welcome until they prove they aren't. I suppose in the end, if I didn't like it, I would just close it down. Sneaky Zaku said, What is your favourite M1? The tank? The tankette? The armoured car? The semi-automatic rifle? The other, smaller semi-automatic rifle? The failed semi-automatic rifle? The submachine gun? The anti-aircraft gun? The other anti-aircraft gun? The artillery howitzer? The flamethrower? The helmet? The bazooka variant? The flamethrower? The mine? The other mine? The shotgun? The anti-tank gun? Or the motorway? Uh, one of each please? The good old Americans and their crystal clear naming convention. Musay said, what would you consider the modeler's version of the Hippocratic Oath? I think the concept is ridiculous and pretentious. It sounds like something someone who is way too serious about modeling, and perhaps themselves, would come up with. I'd probably find interacting with that person exhausting. I mean, we're gluing stuff together and covering it in paint. As great as making models is, it's not some big heroic feat. I think comparing it with a doctor and saving lives and such is a bit silly, but I guess if I'm forced to come up with something it would be build what you like and don't be a dick. But that's just basic rules for life, really. Jack647 said, What is a wargarble? This, assuming I don't forget to edit in the wargarble image. Major General Bunk said, do you know of any websites or YouTube channels with a decent library of Flames of War battle reports? Google searching has been utterly hopeless in this regard. I'm afraid I don't. I haven't really felt like watching any kind of battle report for a long while, so I can't think of anybody that does them. I thought Wahoo Warrior did Flames of War, but it turns out he does bolt action. I'm of no help here, unfortunately. 
In the YouTube comments for the previous Ask a Herpet Herpet Herp, Jan Tima said, What is the worst modelling experience you ever had? I don't think I've ever had anything happen to stand out as the worst ever. I think maybe attempting the airfix Bismarck was pretty bad. Maybe moments of frustration like with the Ravel Arc Royal kit where I stabbed that destroyer are not the most enjoyable experience, but I don't know if I would call them the worst. I guess even though things might be annoying or frustrating sometimes, I'm still doing a hobby that I really enjoy, so it's still not a bad time, if that makes sense. EP Art said, What are you looking forward to in 2020? I'm sure there's a lot of cool things happening that I just can't think of at the moment. Off the top of my head, the big thing I'm looking forward to is seeing Iron Maiden, assuming they don't cancel or whatever. I really hope they don't. It cost me a lot of money to get tickets. There are other bands that I'm excited to see as well, like Oakley Doakley, and I'm hoping Sabaton tour here as well. Also, Star Trek Picard comes out, and more Star Trek Discovery. Can't really think of anything else. Not without sitting here and umming and ahhing for hours anyway. You Found Sand said, Paint 6mm Napoleonics. There's no manners or even a question mark here. I don't much care for demands, and I'm not that into Napoleonics, so I'm not going to do this. I'm really not sure why people think being demanding and impolite is going to yield positive results, but whatever. Let's go and have a look at some of the models shared in the Discord server over the last couple of weeks. Vrokali, if I'm saying that right, shared these work in progress kit bashes. These are based on the Panzer II from Tamiya, and Warhammer bits have been added to them. That gigantic gun is pretty much unmistakably a 40k bit. Very interesting models, and I look forward to seeing them painted. Official Jesus Christ shared this plane, which I just can't identify beyond that it seems to be a US plane. Cue the plane fanboys saying, You need to learn more about planes! Being unable to identify planes doesn't disqualify me from being able to see when a model is extremely well done. Though I will say, as well as the weathering is done, it doesn't look to me like an active service aircraft. Though perhaps maybe it's being used in an unimportant role or something. Either way, it looks amazing, and I rather like the bomb with express delivery written on it. That's a nice little touch. It's always a pleasure to see your work. And here's another plane. This one is from Epic. I can tell this is a Mustang. Or is it? Dun dun dun. This one is a 172nd scale model and is nice and shiny. Unlike Jesus' plane, this one is rather clean. It does have a little bit of weathering, but not much. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I think it looks pretty good. I especially like the big bitey mouth at the front. The, was that too fast? Decal is pretty good too. Very nice work. Trekan Belovich has shared this Nebelwerfer Alf Maltier, or Panzerwerfer, both of which are funny sounding names. Please insert joke about werfing Nebels here. This is a 15mm scale resin and metal kit from Battlefront, and it is of course very nicely painted. Trekan does that, and also seems to get a lot of painting done. I'm a little bit jealous of that. Either way, I really enjoy this. Monol shared this NVA T3485M. This is, I believe, a Rubicon kit that has been kit bashed, though not quite as much as some of Monol's previous models. It looks very nice and I really like the camo scheme. You don't often see T-34s in anything but plain green. Monol has also finished this Blood Raven's Predator Destructor. I really like the red colour you've used here. It's really nice. The bases are pretty rad too. A whole army like this would be quite impressive to see on the gaming table. All round great work. Gopnik shared this very nice looking Czech MiG-21 MF. I choose to believe that MF stands for motherfucker. It wasn't mentioned what manufacturer this kit was from, but it's in 148th scale and it's very well painted. I particularly like the weathering. The tarnished look of the metallic bodywork is very nice. Next, some more planes. This time from Space Monkey who has shared this pair of Newport 17s. These are in 172nd scale made by Edward. I like that you've done them both in different paint schemes. They're both painted quite nice and neatly too. World War I aeroplanes are some interesting contraptions. Does the pilot have to stand up to use that machine gun? I would expect not, but it kind of looks like that's the case. Either way, nice work. And more from Space Monkey. These soldiers. 
Space Monkey has been, over the last month and a half or so, painting a German and British soldier a day. These are to represent the men who gave their lives during the First World War. There are 84 figures here, 42 German and 42 British. I have been watching these and I really like the concept. Also the execution is very good. I would say that it's worth scrolling up through the modelling channel on Discord to check these out. Space Monkey was posting them as they were completed, so I've not included every image here. I think the picture I enjoyed most was this one. There are a lot of interesting poses amongst these soldiers, but this one is the one that made me chuckle. Very nice work. Daddy Kritika shared this Soviet P-40, which is a very dusty boy, who has been fighting over Crimea in 1942. There have been quite a few work in progress pictures of this, and a lot of the other models too, posted on Discord. I'm not going to share them all because it would result in a 5 hour video, but you should definitely check them out. This model is very nicely painted, and I believe the markings were all hand painted. The canopy looks a bit weird to me, it stands out quite a lot, but it's still very good work. Stuglife shared this, not a Stug, but a very nicely done Jagd Tiger, and says that this is after 4 months of work. I don't think anybody will disagree that it's 4 months well spent to achieve such an awesome result. It looks really good in the natural light too. The third picture here makes it look as though it's gazing off into the distance contemplating things. Not necessarily bad things, though that's where the comments went. Maybe it's just wondering if anybody's coming back to refill its tanks with fuel or something. Either way, it's awesome work. Keep it up. And that's it for the modelling this week. As always, I haven't shared everything that was posted in Discord. I shouldn't need to explain it, but somebody's going to be a whiny baby about it. I just don't have the time to make and don't want to make a 5 hour long video sharing absolutely everything. Okay, so that's it for Ask a Herpa Derpa Derp this fortnight. Next time I'll probably include some arts and crafts. So if you've got something cool and artistic you've made that isn't a model, feel free to share it on Discord and I might include it in the video. And of course if you've got a question, you probably know what to do. But in case you don't, post it either in the comments below or on Discord, in the appropriate Ask a Herpa Derpa Derp channel. Thank you to everybody who shared their models and asked questions. And an extra big thank you to Bobby Shafto, our newest patron. Your support is very much appreciated. And now is the part where I say don't forget to subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a YouTube member or patron, and all of the other things you do on YouTube and social media. Links to all of my things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other and thank you for watching. Farewell.